is here. This is the Vintage Swing Band. This is our fourth and a half time we're here. The half is a hurricane concert. You only got half a concert. All right. We hope you enjoy this show. Tonight we're going to take you on a musical journey through the holiday season. We'll play some of the beloved Christmas standards. And we have some more current tunes, a couple you've probably never heard of, but that become some of your new favorites. Our first song is one that you will recognize from the Charlie Brown Christmas. My name is Bruce Cameron, and we're the Vintage Swing Men.
joined us tonight. And we're so happy to be celebrating Christmas with you. The next song that the band will be playing is one of my very favorites, the Christmas song. So believe it or not, this song was actually written on a hot summer day. Did you know that? In 1945 by Mel Torme and Bob Wells, who were just trying to get some relief from the heat by thinking of their favorite winter scenes.
Beautiful words on that song. Thank you. Uh, now listen to this 1934 classic that Tony Bennett and Lady Gaga have recently revived. I'm going to introduce Lev. Come on up, Lev. Thank you. Who's Thank going you. to help invite help me invite you to a winter wonderland? Oh, my God. 
Thank you. So now the same stage has been set. It's a frosty December and we're all making plans to spend time with family and friends. So sit back, take a deep breath, and let the thoughts and feelings of the season flow. Here's So They Say It's Christmas Time, written by Brian Setzer for Lou Rawls for the 1996 movie soundtrack, Jingle All the Way. So they say it's Christmas time again. The calendar says December, but it's wrong. Cause Christmas is the time when lovers pray divide. And two hearts are beating and everyone is fleeting. So they say it's Christmas time, I know. But I'll just keep pretending till they go. Cause if they say it's Christmas, I'll think you're here with me. If they say it's Christmas time, Family a lot over the holidays? <laughs> um, 
I do, yeah. We celebrate big at Christmas time for sure. Who are you most looking forward to seeing this Christmas? I'm going to say my sisters. You know, I haven't seen them much. Sisters? Yeah. You've got more than one sister? I do. I have two sisters. Your parents must have really had their hands full with three of you. <laughs> you know, one of the most famous female duets is a song called Sisters. Did you know that? I did know that. Did you oh. guys know that? <laughs> did you bring any of your sisters here tonight? I did, actually. My sister Kathy. Oh. Here are Amy and Kathy singing Sisters from the 1954 hit, White Christmas. Cheer, comfort, and joy they bring is what it makes the season so special. Here in the Midwest, we get some snowstorms, but these storms can also provide the perfect opportunity to enjoy our family and friends. Here's Amy singing the winter favorite. It's good enough. 
family gathered, it's snowing. I suppose the next step is the kids, anxious to tell us about what they want for Christmas. Amy, yes, you're a Chris. teacher, aren't you? I am a teacher, yeah. Oh, cool. Have you ever heard about any of your students wanting an unusual Christmas present? Oh yeah, the best is when they want a pet, right? I teach fourth grade. There's a lot of really creative students out there that want pets. Really? A pet? Oh, come on. No parents want that, right? Hi. <laughs> Hello, Kara. Okay. Hello, Kara. I know a song. Like Wait, don't tell me you want a pet for Christmas. I kind of do. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Rob. <laughs> I know a song about a very interesting animal, and my grandpa said I could sing about it. So if you don't mind, I'll take it from here. <laughs> take it away, girl. Any particular year? 
honey. <laughs> um, how about 1954? I don't know. <laughs> Take it away. One, two, quickly Jack Armstrong. Jack, would you please stand? <laughs> Jack is a senior at North Central College. We'll be graduating next year. He plays every saxophone instrument known to man and trumpet. And I found out he started out on accordion. That lasted about two weeks. <laughs> The one thing I like about all our scholars is they're very subdued dressers. That's pretty cool. But can we have a hand for Jack Armstrong? You guys pay early. We're still waiting for a check from a gig we played a couple days ago. So that other 500 will go to Jack as well. So we appreciate you guys supporting the band. And uh, we love having these young guys 
play with us. Because us old guys don't have what they call chops. <laughs> These guys can play forever, but we have guys like our, uh, our solo trump trumpet back there that plays beautiful solos, but he shies away from the five hour gigs. <laughs> All right. Amy, you had some great gift ideas. That's great. And I know that you've been on your best behavior, and hopefully, with that rope under the tree, remember Santa is making his list. Have you guys been nice this year? And we'll get some time to turn it around if you haven't been. Let take it away. stay on the nice list personally so you know Santa's a pretty cool guy we start listening to crystal songs in July drives Pam up a wall but I heard this song and I fell in love with it it's actually a Bette Midler song and it's right up Amy's alley Amy's going to tell us about the extraordinary trip that Santa's gonna take with a song called cool Yule
that he makes, right? I thought it was bad to just carpool my kids around. <laughs> Speaking of being exhausted on Christmas Eve, after we've gotten those kids to bed, parents often take a minute to just relax and uh, hope that no one's getting up to peek to see if someone has arrived. Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas was written in 1943 and was used in the film Meet Me in St. Louis. Despite its melancholy lyrics, it provides a welcome respite from the holiday chaos with its beautiful melody. song, we hope you'll keep an eye out for him. Love, it's all yours. What? Is that you, Santa Claus? Yes, I'm preparing for some Christmas sharing, but I pause me Is that you, Santa Claus? Sure, it's dark now. Take this light a spark out of my flagging jar. Who's there? Who is it? Uh, stop and call a visit. Is that you, Santa Claus? Just what 
easier for him to make the rounds than, uh, than our crowded room here. All right, it's fun to think of Santa as the headliner of Christmas, but we can't forget the reason for the season. On that night so many years ago, something very special happened, and the real showstopper took the stage, a very special baby called Jesus. Our next song, Mary Did You Know, is a relatively modern Christian song about God's greatest gift. And it has become a holiday favorite.
goal is next year to find the words to that song. We have not been able to find them in a big band version, but that's an equally beautiful song as well. This is my request. And this song, I looked really hard for a big band version of this particular song. Could not find it. And uh, luckily our piano player, who's a very talented musician, said, I'll write it and I want to do a duet. But it has to be with Amy. I have no idea why they asked for such a thing. But here is Jim and Amy. The wife is still over here. I, I know, I know. I know. But there's two notes you can't hit yet, Ken. No one can but this lady right there. Here is Old Holy Night. Oh, you might be in trouble.
whole thing together. And also, after we worked on it, he changed the entire key of it because I wanted it a little different. So, <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, next up is a tune based on a uh, famous Duke. No, not Sir Duke Ellington, as you guys were probably going to guess, right? But uh, the Duke I'm thinking of was a Duke of Bohemia from the 10th century. This carol celebrates charity and generosity and has been covered by artists from Bing to Basie to the Beatles. Here is Good King Wenceslas. <laughs> So the next big holiday, after the day after Christmas, is our next song. What are you doing, New Year's Eve? Yeah. 
further, we're gonna hijack the show from you, Bruce. Sorry. Can you stand over there? Yeah. <laughs> it's not in the script. It's not in the script. So Dan wants to tell you some stuff. Finally, get the microphone in. It doesn't work. Um, does anybody know Bruce? Yeah. So about three and a half years ago, I, I go to church, my wife and I and family go to church with Pam and Bruce, and he said, hey, I think I'm, I'm going to start a jazz band. I heard you used to play, so 25 years ago in high school, I played the saxophone, and I'm like, what is this guy talking about? Well, his nick as you know, his nickname is Biggs, not only because he's so tall, but he goes all in on everything, makes it big. This guy has put in so much into this band. Um, I think hopefully you agree that the product has turned out really well, but uh, we really appreciate <laughs> We really appreciate everything that Bruce and Pam have done for us. Uh, they truly treat us like family. They've allowed some of us who haven't, hadn't touched our horns in decades to kind of relive and pretend that we're one of the scholarship winners here, <laughs> and have a lot of fun with it. But we really appreciate everything. Um, yes. Um, and this is to you, Bruce, just a little token of our appreciation. And we need Pam to come on up. So. You all know Pam. Yeah. Um, Pam used to be my team leader, and that's why everything got done, and we had the best team at Thompson. And now, she's the team leader of an entire band, and we all really wanted to honor her because we can't believe all that she does for this band. She's pretty amazing. So there might be a little gift card for you to um, have some relaxed time, and it's not for Bruce, it's just for you. So, we love you, Pam. So, back to our regular The Schedule program. Uh, of course, if we're talking about New Year's Eve, we can't forget the quintessential song that is played at the stroke of midnight to ring in the new year. Wait, what is it? <laughs> yeah. Um, thanks to Guy Lombardo, who started this tradition in 1930. And thanks to Dick Clark, who kept it going with those New Year's Rockin' Eve broadcasts. Feel free to sing along.
So do you know someone who just doesn't really like the holidays? <laughs> no naming names now, come on. <laughs> someone who maybe gets a little crabby and mean this time of year. Well, the lyrics to this next song describe someone who is nauseating, vile, rotten, nasty, unpleasant, foul-smelling, uh, and bad-mannered. And no, I'm not talking about one of my teenagers, and I'm not talking about Matt Cameron either, but um, he is going to give us a little musical rendition of The Grinch here. A musical treat. That's great, yeah. Um, the darker side of things with Matt.
hard decision. Do we have Kara sing that song and Matt do Hippo? We went back and forth for about two seconds. All right. Our final song is coming up. It was originally written to alert guests that the party was ending and it was time to go home. Amy is going to sing with her husband, Baby, It's Cold Outside.